Was this your game of the week too, Demented? Uh, no, no, not mine. Okay, but still a good one. We all agree this one was uh is going to be an interesting one. The the Bretonian Nobles Hispanos is going to go against the Afterlife Mints, which is a monster undead team. Uh, taking a look really, really quick at the Bretonian Nobles Hispanos, they are coached by uh, Sir, Sir Jules 77 who uh, Bernie Buffon said uh, has been a very solid coach. He's watched a few of his matches and he says he the positioning is great and he really uses this team great. Um, a really prototypical Brett team in that there's no crazy stat upgrades other than that agility for Blitzer uh, who has uh, suffered a injury so his armor's down um, and no, no inducements here for the stadium. It, they're playing at the Castilla, which means castle in Spanish. And uh, so that's the Brett team. All right, looking at the uh, the Afterlife Mints. Whoa, uh, Demented, you want anything that you remember specifically about this team? Well, the mummies are scary as hell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Especially the one with Block. And Tackle. And, uh, that the, I mean, the ghouls are kind of underdeveloped, except for the one super ghoul who's yeah. <laughs> level six with Julia Childs. mighty blow and tackle and oh yeah. god he's yeah this is, and there's a lot of wrestle so this is the second most popular team fan factor wise uh behind the bloody elves that went into the first round Be behind your own bloody elves they're a fan factor of 13 um they play uh in the medicine cabinet normally but this will not be at the medicine cabinet as we as we said this will be at, at the castilla all right and with that you told me they are already up and running on the field, right? Yep, the kick just happened, and there have been no blocks made so far. So awesome. we're still fresh into it. So that sounds like a great time for me to click on that match and get us going. Wow, so many teams being played right now, huh? So many matches mm -hmm. of Blood Bowl. Three pages so full the, of them. The Bretts have, uh, the Bretts have kicked off, and the kickoff event was... I, th I think it was changing weather. It was nothing really special. So. Okay. Cool. And yeah, no, uh, inducements really have happened. been had, by the way. We talked about that in the in the uh, season preview that we did, which you can still find earlier on my Twitch. I'll be putting it up on YouTube as well. But the uh, Nobles Hispanos had 180k in inducements, and they used it for a wizard. Then they went the further spe step and spent an additional 70k from their bank for an apothecary. So I think they've got an extra apothecary. The mint spent no money. They said, bring it on. We already got a, a, an Uber team. We don't need to spend anything. We're going to beat the crap out of you. Oh, and and the blood the Bloodweiser babe was bought by the Hispanos too. So they, they whittled their bank all the way down to 20K. And it's popping up now. So I see the ball has been kicked off. You're seeing some, some of these um, ghouls making a run. They look like frogs in all green, right? They're making yeah, a they run for do. the ball. <laughs> And uh, I, I think I've tuned in. It uh, Cabal Vision has put me a little bit behind what's going on currently. So I'll, I'll let you know as soon as we're caught up. But uh, we are in uh, what I'm watching right now on my screen and what our viewers are watching are uh, basically the end of or, or turn one for the Afterlife Mints as they started with the blocks. So we've seen one successful block uh, knocking somebody to the ground from Ben the something, ma the Fairy Master, I guess. And then Prawn follows up with a hit on the Blitzer and knocks him down. Lothar, whatever, D'Artois. Lothar, D'Artois. And, uh, and now Prawn's going to take his spot back and not follow up on that blitzer leave him on the ground and now i think we're caught, we're all caught up and you're seeing what i'm seeing yep that's where we're at cool you just got three pieces left to to move that yeah, skeleton advancing the screen likely see the pickup next here we go so just in case you're watching this as a viewer and you didn't um, see the preview, uh, both Demented and I did the preview of the of all you know round one, um, as well as uh, Bernie Buffon and Trippers, who was one of the coaches playing in this match. Um, we were all, a lot of us were saying what's going to be so interesting about this match is that just the uh, the Bretonian squad seems to have some tools by virtue of what's inherent what inherently comes in the development tree of bretonians to counter some of these uh you know deadly deadly characteristics that come on the on the uh, uh undead team for instance the, there is a lot of dauntless by virtue of the four blitzers so that could counter the mummies and um and then you also have a lot of wrestle so those like very vicious blockers with mighty blow could take a hit um on some of these players 
Uh, and with the Fend and the Mighty Blow, first of all, they're only, uh, I'm sorry, with the Fend and the Wrestle, they're only going to get one shot at a lot of these guys. And if they do, um, you know, if they, if, they, if they hit the bolt down, they're going to find themselves on the ground and possibly getting fouled, which the Bretonians coincidentally are also very equipped to do. So it's one of those rare instances where you have like a very super special team with, you know, some serious upgrades like the mummies, I mean, uh, like the uh, undead, but they're possibly countered just by virtue of what this race naturally brings to the table that they're playing. I think that sums it up very well. Uh, I mean, both sides are going to want to get a good foul in here at some point. So much wrestle. It's... Yeah. Somebody's going to go down and get nailed. Absolutely. We'll see That's how what she it goes down. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> Nothing and really eventful so far. There's been no no armor breaks. Just everybody's running around the field. Positioning batter, uh, battle. And I got to say... Uh, something I've never commented on before, but it just seems appropriate here. The color scheme is extraordinary. I really like this orange on green in the way, like, it's very easy to tell who the two, you know, which which player belongs to what side. And honestly, as a University of Miami fan, I kind of just like the color scheme. It does make it a little <laughs> more interesting to see. Yeah. This is like when the NFL uses, um, you know, they, they do the single color uniforms once a year or whatever and, until they start getting like some complaints from the uh, colorblind community that, uh, that it made it harder for them to watch. But then I, they adjusted to that anyway. But you could see the teams in like a full one color, you know, just the, the clash of such different bright colors is kind of cool. So you can decide who, who good is and who, be, who evil is, but... One of these teams, is, it's very easy to tell good from evil here. Oh, that's a failed dodge. There we go. I like what the Hispanos are doing here, though, because it's going to be hard for them to cage up here. Yep. And this actually looks very similar to the um, formation that oh, uh, my high elves no. used. Uh-oh. Uh, I think that was an error, because uh, grab negates the sidestep. Yep. I don't think he's used to. He he felt comfortable with leaving that Brett there, and uh, you know, I is it possible? You know, I, I know Bernie has raved about this coach, about Sergio seventy seven. He said uh, he's done very very well against some very worthy opponents, but you know, the the playoffs is a uh, you know we know trip. Uh, well, actually, both of these guys are. I'm, I'm sorry, we know Synonymous rather is a. Um, by the way, before I said Trippers was coaching, he's not. I'm sorry. This is Synonymous's undead team. I, I confused which coach was coaching which team. But uh, Synonymous is a seasoned cup veteran from season one. And this is the first we've heard of Sergio. So he's, uh, we're bound to see some, some nice moves or some genius moves. But this is like a uh, welcome to the cup, son. Because these are quality <laughs> yeah. coaches. You can't forget about the fact they have uh, you know, specific skills in place to mess with what you think is a, a, uh, a game-changing skill on your side. And losing a blitzer to a surf is big. It's tough, too, because grab is a bit of an uncommon skill. You don't see it come up too often, but yep. when it does, you, you got you to gotta yeah. see it. Yeah. Because that's going to be punishing. And there's here's the wrestle going into effect. So Krabby thinks he's gonna deliver a mighty blow on Louis on uh, Louis L. Rudo, I guess. Can't see that whole name. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, instead, the judo kick, the Bretonian judo kicks in. Bretonian judo just as deadly as the famous Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's good for the Brets because that means if that mummy takes the block, the peasant's gonna be freed up, barring uh, an armor break. Right. The white, the white, otherwise likely would have followed up, thus keeping the peasant uh, in check. True. And here comes the boom. Oh. Thrills is going to give it to Grande Albert, who is Fat Albert in Spanish, and it's a nasty left hook. Albert stunned, wondering what the hell hit me. Felt like a building crashing down on his jaw. 
and you see the Afterlife Mints with a very, very solid formation in terms of screening off. And I was going to say, um, if they're not able to make this single die block, though, you would have, but you would have seen a big hole in the cage, mm -hmm. or a Especially hole in the with screen that rather. Blitzer unmarked there. That Absolutely. could have, could have been a big problem. So that's a that was a, a risky play, but it, it paid off. Failed skeleton dodge, and the fairy master gets the uh, the Johnny sweep the leg kick coming from yeah. one of those peasants. That takes away the uh, the surfing option because he was in a position to be surfed if you want oh. to spend the blitz. Oh, fireball coming early, and it takes down the white, but the ghouls seem to have their flame retardant suits on. And um, That's that being a good said, opening, though. though. Yeah, it was because it frees up. Now you have at least, at the very least, a single die block coming from uh, Gautier de Couron. And uh, you're going to see the, the Brett start to mark up undead just in case. Oh, you're going to probably see a two die block. Uh, assuming that the wrestler, Thibaud de Epe, can knock down this too much coffee man skeleton. <laughs> I like that name. Um, then you're going to see a two die block on this ghoul. Ooh. From a tackle blitzer. I'm, so this I'm a little is a great surprised time he to took the block with that piece because that guy has strip ball. That might have been the ideal one to go for in for the blitz here. Normally, I would I would agree with that. The uh, <clears throat> the only thing is that your uh, your blitzer has block and tackle. So I mean, I think he makes up for right rather than use the you're trying to bring the farther out wrestler. Yeah, true. You just you just want to have a much better likelihood of putting that ghoul down for good as well at the same time. Right, and and if something went wrong with the block from the other from the other oh there we go goodbye that was all for all of that doesn't matter that strategy planning doesn't matter because the the pal comes up and garlic Busey gives up the rock and now you're gonna see Gautier de Clouron either run up to that ball or grab it and. Why not oh, I would grab go it, for the right? Pickup. Yep. yep. You got to you got to take it. You can't let that thing sit there and let some of these ghouls get all dodgy on you. And are we seeing a potato? Yeah, we're seeing a potato demented. He's he's just like basically Gautier is saying come 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 at me, bro. That that's not a bad potato though cuz there's only one guy free that can reach him and he's about to be marked right now. True. So True. Yeah. So we're going to have a dodge this out. Is, uh, to a one die, uh, you theoretically could get Irma out there for a two die block, theoretically, but it would be, I don't think it's worth the, uh, yeah, the dodging. No, you gotta I take your chances to... with the one die block dodge. Yeah, it's very, very risky here. <laughs> and let's see how the how the mints react. Wow. So we talked about this in the preview, right? Like, obviously, the mints are the more developed team. We're going pure stat-wise. You know, these teams are, uh, you know, you, you, the, the mints are a heavy favorite. But, you know, aside from the, the, the particular skill set the Bretonians bring, they also brought a ton of inducements. And they spent some of their own money to load up on them. So having all of this stuff, like having the wizard, having the, um, you know, the, and the wizard, using the wizard at the right time, and, um, you know, having these other, you know, having the reserve uh, apothecary and all that stuff, that, that really is a game changer. Mm -hmm. That was a good placement on the sidestep, too. That blocks off that ghoul. Yeah. From dodging around. Yeah. So uh, the the mints trying to get their hits in, realizing that it's it's unlikely that they're able to free the ball up with the unskilled ghoul from a blodging sidestepping a blod stepping um, <laughs> blitzer on a one die block. There's a one in six chance that's happening, and that's if you make the dodge to get there. Uh, they're yeah, just gonna a... maximize their hits in the meantime. Three plus with re-roll into a uh, six plus needed to get yeah. that. And even yeah. if you free up the ball, 
who do you have to pick it up other than the lone guy? The same there. guy who's just gonna get cracked by the same dude that yeah. took it from him and <laughs> or took it from his friend. There's, there's there's free Bretts upfield right now. They're ready to go. Ooh, this is it's, ugly. This is a really bad spot. You know, I I kind of think there's a good chance you might see a, a stall. Uh oh. All right, so if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The reroll gets you a push, and all it manages to to do is annoy Gauthier de Coran. And will Gorgon Ramsey continue to mark him up? Or is he just going to say, screw it, have the TD? I think you have to mark him. At I... least uh, allow for the possibility of a failed roll, and then you're already on him. Uh, you can't win if you don't take a chance. Yeah, but, but what you can do, right, if you're the mints, uh, you, you could say, screw it, I'm going to force them to score now, right, Run, and then and then I have, well, from uh, six turns to come back, even it up, and then play some good defense in the second half. You know, yeah, so that's what he's going to do. He's going to leave the ghoul back there as a threat. So if the, if the mm -hmm. Bretts think about, you know, constructing an uber screen and kicking him away, yeah, and they're, but even that might not be enough, honestly. <laughs> you yeah, might now, <laughs> I mean, I think stalling is likely the way to go, but now it's going to take two pieces to blitz that ghoul. So it's probably the right call, because he, if he wants to stall, he has to hit that ghoul. Yeah, I think they're going to. Uh, honestly, I don't think he's scoring right away. Yeah, huh. I, uh huh. Or he might hit the ghoul, see how it goes. You think he hits him with the ball carrier? That's pretty ballsy, but the ball carrier has tackle and block, and the ghoul doesn't have any of that. Yeah, he's the best man for the job. Yeah. When they're hmm. locking him up, they're locking him up good. Why? Uh, so, I mean, do you think that was a little bit out of order? If you're going to hit the ghoul, you hit him first, and then you place your guys where you want them. Unless he's going to knock them back behind those guys somehow. I think from this positioning, you you blitz him from above, and you knock him straight down. Right, into the two. Oh, no, okay, yeah, that gives him an avenue to dodge out, whereas if he hit him straight down, he'd be surrounded by tackle zones. Yeah, exactly. Still, still though, I will say this, that now you've knocked him farther away from you and you can sit there. And is he out of range completely? He's not. That's a dangerous... A danger oh, no, he's a sidestepper. He's a sidestepper, so he's fine. And there's no grab near him. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this time, he's, he probably looked out for it. Hardcore. <laughs> yeah, he's going to remember that now, I'm sure. <laughs> V Power V says his uh, his dark horse team is pulling some early shock tactics. Do you remember who you picked as the dark horse? The dark, I, I don't know if I picked one. Uh -huh. The dark horse to like the underdog? Yeah, like one of the you know there were some favorites in the team in, in the in the tournament, um, and you know then there were the, the guys that kind of squeaked in there with the lower records not having not having as developed teams and i thought we went yeah we went through i thought everybody picked one team that they were saying that's who's their dark horse squad i, I remember you picked afterlife right to to win the whole thing oh uh, i thought i no that. no i i i picked dnr out of the bottom bracket to okay. to make it all the way to the playoffs and then i was at the top half I figured either Arzawain or Bernie and settled on Bernie. Oh, okay. I think that's what I went with, yeah. But uh, I think least likely here, uh, toughest road ahead of them would likely be Yokito. Oh, no, no. What I meant was like a, a team that's not like in the top favorites to win the whole thing, but who could surprise everybody and win it, Dark Horse-wise. I, I'd have to say Yukito, just because he has such a mountain to climb. He, he took right. so many, his sources are so underdeveloped because yeah. of injuries, and he has such tough teams and coaches ahead of him that for him to get there, holy heck, that's <laughs> that's an undertaking. So. So all right, so so who's your sleeper then? That's that's maybe the better question is who's your sleeper in the tournament. 
team that nobody expects to take it all, but, you know, or most people wouldn't expect to take it all, but could surprise and go all the way. Or get very damn close. Probably these Bretts here, I guess, because they're... Uh, Sergal, I'm not familiar with this coach. He seems to do all right. Uh, he has a, a season three team that's already got uh, a solid record. But, uh, you know, every, a lot of people coming in here, including yourself, expected the Mints to be just an absolute force to deal with. And yeah. uh, so, if he, you know, for, for him to come out of this, he's a lot of people look at him as the underdog. So Definitely. Yeah, if he makes it past this, people are he's going to go from from underdog to oh shoot. <laughs> um, last season, who was like uh, who had somebody somebody? Oh, that's who it was. Uh, Rostafer last season with the high elves. Remember, we were all looking at Stuntman Didi's Dark Side Cowboys or Dark Side Indians rather as a uh, as a um, you know kind of unstoppable force with all the stat upgrades and in the threat of that Uber Ghoul coming over. And uh, and looking at Gauthier sideways, Gauthier says, "You know what? I'm gonna score now. I'll just we'll, we'll play defense. We're good with that." I think that was the right call. He didn't even make a block. He just didn't want the chance of failure. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, that, that you know, yeah, the the first playoffs, top seeded team knocked out first round. This yep. playoffs, top seeded team knocked out first yeah. round. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. So games. <laughs> yeah, it was too bad Rostefer couldn't uh, keep the uh, the momentum going after that initial win. But uh, it knows, doesn't bode well for me. For I'm, I'm running three. the I'm running the high elf team. Actually, I just thought about that. Both times, high elves knocked off the number one team in both playoffs. But hopefully, uh, th this year's high elves don't follow in that pattern. <laughs> don't follow in the pattern of losing the second round. High elves have been my kryptonite. I just, I still struggle with them sometimes. Ugh, so they're tough down the line. They're they're a little tough to start with, playing at the lower, um, in the level. Oh, perfect defense kicks in, and things just keep going right for the Bretts. Wow. And um, I think know, this is a touchback, though, isn't it? Yeah, this is going to yeah. be a touchback, which makes it a little less good. Right. No, it's yeah, that that kind of nerfs it actually. Because wherever they put their um I mean not really nerfs it, but it does take away some of the initial setup juice that the uh, undead came up with. I mean fortunately they left uh, you know, one guy at least one guy off the line who can get anywhere. But I'm sorry, I gotta get my door real quick. Can you take over? Sure. All right, thanks. Go solo. Show them what you got, kid. <laughs> All right, well, I think this might be pretty close to it for the perfect defense placement. That's likely the last movement right there. That'll tie up the left-hand side. Forcing him to likely have to commit more over to that side, which is awkward with uh, having the mummies where they are. It's a good strategy. He'll force the undead to be spread out a bit. Very disappointed that there's no fouls yet. Both teams have dirty players. What's going on here? God. No fouling. <laughs> That's my request. Do, do, do. Touchback. Hmm. Interesting choice. Oh, I'll 
Ooh, that's not good. If the undead go for a cage here, there's a good chance the Brats might just go all in on breaking that cage due to how the teams are positioned. So, let's have to see how these blocks go. Like he just wants to go all in on that left side or his right side. All right, I'm back. Uh, so they gave it to um, they gave it to the ghoul. He, he wasn't messing around. <laughs> I, I think I'm seeing V Power V th saying in the chat he was calling for the for them to give it to the mummy. It's not very that wouldn't be uh, conventional. <laughs> I. I think I would have personally maybe given it to the uh, the killer white, just because dodge helps with protecting the ball, whereas this guy doesn't have block. But the extra movement is nice. Obviously, if this guy does score, he skills up, which is good for the rest of the playoffs. So it's just where he placed them. He's one square away from a side stepper, which uh, <laughs> it's a little dangerous. Yeah. No. Good. Good point. We yeah, got to him up. But I do like the idea of keeping um, keeping the ball in the hands of the more unskilled guy in a way with the guy with dodge. You know, because if you're just for this team, right, because um, your ghouls are so unskilled and you've got, you know, you've got these other killers and you need to whittle down numbers this early in the game. Or like maybe later in the game when, when attrition is not that big of a concern. But you put the ball in the hands of that white, you just lost a dude with tackle and mighty blow who could be, you know, causing hate and discontent over on the other side. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's That would be the, the biggest downside to that plan because uh, there... And Wait, again, you have another one? one. You have another one with tackle and mighty blow, and you have a mummy with tackle and mighty blow. <laughs> this dude is insane, man. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely heavily down the line of uh, development. You have a a few level six pieces here. That's what happens right, when like, you play over fifty games with the team, which is actually. Yeah. The optimal, so like, you know, we've, season three, we've kind of identified our, um, our, what is it, target games played per team is 42, because that puts you at about one game per day of the season. Uh, so a serious person making a run for the playoffs will have, will make, set time aside to play one game a day. You know, or if you don't, you know, if you don't get it one day, you get two on another day, you know, but basically if you can average one game a day. That's where you're at. You get 100% credit for your win-loss ratio. Anything under that, you only get a certain percentage of your win-loss ratio, and then there's like a bonus for playing more, but it's a very, very small bonus. It'll be interesting yeah, to see how I stuff works out. Yeah, I think it's a out. bit better than previous seasons. Oh. There we go. Talking about... Oh, so... We've talked about the lethal pieces on the side of the undead. The Bretonians guy gets involved... And that's Lothair D'Artois. Um, he must be Stella's cousin, and he decides he <clears throat> he is uh, he's not able to actually fell the the skeleton. And what sucks about that is they've now burned a reroll. Although they have five of them, they've burned a reroll and um. Yeah, that to that's no really awkward because that uh, that did burn the reroll, and now there's two guard pieces on that blitzer there, which makes uh, using him that much harder. Yeah. You gotta get him out of there, I think. You gotta dodge out. Bro. You can't keep that dude. Ah. But now he's got no reroll and there's tackle pieces on him. True. Yeah, no, you're right. But, oh, God, there's some lethal. There's a mighty blow tackler there. Another just regular tackler there. That could get really ugly. And I know I know the um, <clears throat> the mind screw that, <clears throat> that it 
gives against your opponent to leave him there with the sidestep and put him in contact with the ball carrier. But yeah, I don't think, I, I think Sergio will decide it's not worth it. It's not worth yeah, the chance of losing that guy. It, tackle, mighty blow, odds are he's going down. If he doesn't go down and sidesteps into the cage, at that point, you're probably getting fouled. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you do go down. Yeah. Discretion is a better part of valor for that guy right now. I'll be right back. Yeah, we'll likely see the men switch side. Oh, that's not how you want to start your turn. Ouch, good double call, skulls. man. <laughs> yeah, the double skulls kind of hurts him in two ways because now he's only got one reroll left and he can't use a reroll for the rest of this turn. Yeah, he's got to play this turn super cautious now. Because. He ha next turn, he has to be in scoring position. And moving forward is, is tough. He's likely going to have to just switch sides. That? Oh, he's going to have to take that. <laughs> that lineman down now. Wow. Gets it. All right. Finally an injury. Goodbye, go. Maho Tom. Wizard Tom is what that translates to. He's badly hurt. The mummies are starting to do damage. Really needed that unskilled peasant off the field. It's not <laughs> like there's two more on the sideline. But it does send a message, right? All right it's it's all right. We're rolling our sleeves up, and handling you guys with ear gloves. This is what will happen to you. <laughs> well, it definitely helps because that guy uh, would be a problem otherwise, being back there behind their line, creating uh, positioning issues. Right. Now you're starting to see the um, the ghouls start to showcase their movement, along with the whites. People think of the um, of the undead team as very slow, and they're slow in the sense that the the guys that are the linchpin of the team, the mummies, are very slow. So you, oftentimes your offense has to wait for them. But I don't know. I feel like with you know the, the ghouls can get stuff done with the speed if necessary, along with the whites who have decent speed. Oh dear. That hurts. Yep. Now these ghouls are out of position. Yeah, now that they, um, I'm sure they were going to try to get them in a position where they could be downfield. Well, I think it was, it was correct to at least leave Irma bomb back there because there's no hole necessarily on that side. Right. Right, like, you can't just waltz right around on that side because that guy's down, but uh, it's going to be help to really hard for him to get in a scoring position now. Yeah, especially the Brits, the Brits swing some people around and, yeah, do that. Yeah. He didn't get to blitz either, he, uh, which would have been quite helpful. Yeah. This is really, wow. This is, uh, again, we, we we all identified this as one that could easily be an upset, and it is living up to the billing here. Well, as long as those blitzers are on the field, they're just going to just play this game by themselves. They're going to be where they want to be, they're going to be where they need to be, and the undead are just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> you know, does this make the case? A lot of Brett coaches, um, including Sam T., um, favor not using all four of your blitzers you know they say the strength of the brett team is the uh the, the cheap linemen and you only use like two blitzers three blitzers sometimes and then and don't use all your blockers and you come with it's a plethora of peasants to just get in the way and cause problems and you foul with them you do all that stuff but we're, these blitzers have been really making a case for you know, having four of them is kind of changing the it's it's, it's kind of being difficult on the uh the undead team it's not even like you're looking at crazy stat-up blitzers. These are 
regular development blitzers, right? So, like, except for the mighty blow on one of them and the agility on the other one, but for the most part, normal skills you get in the blitzer tree. In the yeah. blitzer tree. Yeah, three, three of them have mighty blow and and one has uh, agility. So all of them have rolled at least one special roll, but statistically, that's about normal for uh, for being the level that they are. Yeah. We got the tackle zone on the ball carrier now. That's not good for the afterlife mints. Again, though, this just goes to show you anything can anything can happen in these playoffs. And um, I think we we discussed this in the preview. The other undead team. Uh, Tripperis' team, uh, who jumped up under the season two ranking system to like 11 and 0, and then didn't play and then a match. Sat there. <laughs> yeah, didn't play a match for a long time. He said, "Look, the way the ranking system is now, I just it doesn't make sense for for me to risk continuing to play with this team because you know I could he's I could lose one and drop down to number 40 or 50 and not make the playoffs at all." So you could argue, you know, you could argue, yeah, but you're, you're running in with an undeveloped team. But, you know, his theory is, you know what? You make the playoffs is step one. As long as you got that covered, you always got a shot once you're in. Um, it's proving to be true. You know, these less developed Bretts. And, by the way, I don't think these Bretts are that underdeveloped because of, uh, because of not having played a lot of games. I think it's just attrition, right? Often with Bretts, though, you're going to see a lot of players who – who aren't overly developed because most Brett coaches are are going for the inducement route, keep their TV, you know, relatively low 1500 or range. You don't want to jump up to 19, 2000 because then you just feel bloaty with uh, with what you have, and uh, just really rely on the blitzers and some solid blockers and the odd skill on a peasant and away you go. Uh, uh, the key difference here between Sam and Sergal is uh, Sergal clearly prefers the four blitzers, which uh, reduces the the effectiveness of what you're going to get for inducements. But it's still quite good. Yeah, on this team, it's it's worked out. Against this team, it's worked out. Plus, Blood Bowl is largely matchups, right? Like, I think I think I said um. All this Dauntless, all this Wrestle, um, it just really works out against this particular team. It kind of neutralizes the individual strengths. All of that said, Synonymous still clearing, managing to clear a hole now for this ball carrier, who at the very least is going to get a chance to potato up the field and hope for the best. So now, so we see it. What do you think? This has got to be a potato, right? Potato it has to be. Pray. How else do you yeah. score? There's, there's yeah. nobody, there's nobody able to get into position except the ball carrier and this one other ghoul back here. Who? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, you could run down the other ghoul as a scoring threat as backup in case you're potato carrier goes down, which he likely will, and just try and mark up everybody you, you can to force a dodge. You could also swing Krabby, the white, that uh, that uh, tackle mighty, one of the tackle mighty little whites. You could swing him around and use him as an extra screener. I guess, oh, we forgot that there's a safety back there. Gauthier de, de Couron, who freed the ball up the last time the uh, undead were on offense from a ghoul, is just sitting back there. And it was Gorgon Ramsey. So... Actually, you're seeing Gauthier de Curran yelling over at Gorgon Ramsey. Bring it over here, pretty boy. See what happens. Which is probably the only time Gorgon Ramsey's been called a pretty boy in his life. Or non-life. I think, ideally here, you gotta you gotta mark up the mighty blow leader. Blitzer with your white, and then run that ghoul over to the far side, forcing either a one die block or a dodge. 
Oh, no. It looks like what he's going to do is run that. Yeah, just uh, run him that way and say, screw it. You free the ball up. One of these other guys could pick it up and cause a problem. There's like kind of a scream, a screen, which is. Oh, what is. Oh, wow. Oh, well, that, that's interesting. That screens them off a bit better. It screens them off from the, uh, yeah, from the blitzer somewhat. Although, can he still get there? One, two, three from the blocker. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With two GFIs, he can still get there. Um, and it's forced to be a one die now. So that's not the worst play, really. It was that's, a good that's, play, actually. That's not yeah. bad. That was a really good play, yeah. And this is why Synonymous uh, is a uh, repeat coach in the big dance. Or not the big, big dance, but at least the playoffs. He's a uh, repeat contender. That was, pretty damn, that was a pretty damn good move. I mean, we were talking about a potato, and this guy's setting up a, a, a very competent screen. So they choose, the Bretonians choose not to, not to risk the two GFIs. And they just knocked down Gorgon like Ramsey. This. I think I do like this better because this allows them to get right in front of them. Yeah. Because yeah, that, sure. that ball carrier needs a, a GFI to score, I believe, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. And that's not, a side-stepping tackle. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, which is that's even tough. better, yeah. <laughs> Because you can't just push him. You got to knock him down. It's knock him down or bust. Or you're really gonna test uh, Gore, uh, the the agility of what's the school's name? Uh, Garlic Busey. Biggest threat right now is uh, too much coffee, man. The wrestle tackle skeleton. That's the man for the job. <laughs> I love that name. It's hilarious. Oh, that going for it was so worth it because now it's even harder to score. Yeah. And so that was that was necessary as well, because I was thinking the alternate way is you get the ghoul to pass it to the white and you go two GFIs, right? But now yep. they've sealed that off as well. And this is such good play by both coaches. Just a lot of punch counter punch here. Turn eight. How will Synonymous handle this? Because I just I don't see a likely way of getting a touchdown here. Other than some crazy white BS. Well you, you could see a Brett touchdown. That last move did put uh, him in scoring position. Oh yeah, I meant I don't see a way of synonymous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, th I think uh, chain push. A chain push, chain yeah. push to clear the white, get it to the white, and go for it. That's that's your best bet. And of course, if if he fails and drops the ball anywhere, then yeah, that could be devastating. I don't. Even, you can't even push chain push the white free though. Um, well, not to like a real good. You would be chain push. The only way you could chain push him is into. Yeah, it's like oh, if you push him backwards, yeah, yeah. he's out of movement range. So I think you have to kind of just take the three dodges: one, two, three, four. The four unlikely dodges with the ghoul and call it a no, day. No, no, you you can chain push that white free, because the the ghoul is sitting there stunned. If you if you hit uh, the Russell guard blocker 
from directly on his right and get the POW, then you can push the other fella right out of there. Hmm, yeah, so you push the white, you would end up pushing him... No, no, you don't push the white, you push, uh, you, you hit the, the guard wrestle blocker, you POW him, you push him into the unskilled blocker, pushing him down, and now your white is free and doesn't have to dodge through a tackle zone to head for the end zone. Oh, and, correct, uh, correct, 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 good call. Well, you're absolutely right. And here it comes. No, he's not. He's going to oh, go the other no. way. See, he's going to go that way. Okay, so he's just going to say, screw it. I'd like to rely on my ghoul, who's more... Normally, that would be the answer, but the guy that's sitting in front of him has tackle. Yeah. So your so way that's... was much more effective. I think. One, two, three... Wow. So this is going to be a 4 plus, 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus to score, most likely. Yikes. Stranger things have happened, though. Yeah. Oh, no, clearing that guy makes it uh, a 4 plus, 3 plus. Yeah, a 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus. That's actually not. It's not statistically that it's not crazy. Yeah, it's not it's not terrible, but uh, there's a high chance of failure. And he's got Higher a reroll. I would like. He's got a reroll. He does. He made the four. That's good. Oh no. Against him. Well, are we going? Oh, we're probably, so they did a good job at least of covering that blitzer out there. I don't see the Bretts getting a touchdown in response, but I'm sure they'll try. Yeah, because... So that way was a 4-3-2, whereas the other way it would have been a 3-plus dodge with the ghoul, and then a 3-plus handoff and a 2-plus 2-plus. So it would have been 3-3-2-2, two, two, whereas this was 4-3-2. So it was one less roll total. So it's actually not so bad. It was one less roll his way or your way? Uh, his way. His way. So it, at least okay, for so the, uh, the motion to, to score. Gotcha. Yeah. He was banking that he makes the 50. You know, he's like, screw it, 50-50 chance, but I got to roll less. Although your rolls would have been a lot safer, I think. Lower rolls overall, but uh, one extra one, which could be the one that does you in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no interception. interception! Still a, a good old college try on that one, right? It's entertaining to watch. Please. Yep. It, it, it was what it was. He had to go for it just like that. So, going into the second half, already this match is um, more of a scoring extravaganza than the uh, opening match of the uh, of the playoffs between the high, the high Elves and the Woodies, right? Yep, definitely more touchdowns by halftime. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, actually, I don't know if you caught the... I, the replay is available on my Twitch, uh, twitch.tv series. Actually, if you're watching my Twitch, you you know what the Twitch is, but um, I did the uh, a replay version, announcement version of the er match earlier today with the, our Nurgle team, the uh, Baltimore Blood versus the Skaven team, XI, and um, that one was actually the the, the most one-sided game I've probably seen in the Cup, like including se Season 1. Mm -hmm. I actually caught that game. I was looking for a game to watch and saw, surprisingly saw it on and caught it right at turn one. I was surprised <laughs> that it was just on like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've definitely seen uh, I've definitely seen the Skaven coach play better than that. I expected more from him, but 
I mean, we'll likely see him back in the playoffs, I'm sure, at some point. He's a good coach. So. I just, uh, I, maybe it's that Nurgle is a, uh, Nurgle is kind of a, a new race. And um, he just wasn't, I, I think he just quickly clicked that pass play without factoring in the disturbing presence. And, you know, it's one of those situations where if you've never been in it before, that's how you learn from it. And like Bernie learned about overtime the hard way, you know, Mm-hmm. We can call the um, we can call that the stump humper conundrum. So, S- the STC is when you completely forget to factor in disturbing presence, run out to make your pass, and then go, oh shoot, why is this a six plus to complete? Now, if you were the Bretts, would you tr- go for the quick score? I wouldn't go. Well, all right. So I wouldn't stall. If that makes sense. I wouldn't stall on purpose, but no. I also would not take a chance unnecessarily. So, in terms of quick, I, I'm not necessarily looking for a quick score. But if they give it to me, I'm taking it because 2-0 against a uh, a bit of a slower side team is, you know, is acceptable to me at this point. Second half. Yeah, going up 2-0 was like a death sentence at this point. But, uh, it, uh, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it's not an automatic win. The, right. the ghouls do have seven movement. They, the undead are capable of two-turn touchdowns. Right. They can they can get it done. But also, the way the Bretts have been playing defense and stuff, I'd feel comfortable enough to score fast if it was given to me. Yeah, the Bretts have been playing very well, aside from the unfortunate... Uh, a crowd surf that happened early, but I think that also had a bit to do with that failed dodge there, which left the mummy free to do so. He might have been planning on moving that piece and then just got caught. By the way, uh, Bernie is in the chat. No, um, he's saying he thinks that the um, that this makes sense too. He thinks that Stump Humper um, errantly thought that Nerves of Steel. Um, also negates the effect of disturbing presence. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, no, it does not. And it does not. And so Ooh. he thought that when he clicked it, and the percentage said you need a 6+, plus, he was like, oh, that'll be worked out because of Nerds oh. of Steel. Blitz! Soup, soup bone Sammy, go! Go, man, go! <laughs> <laughs> this changes... This potentially changes the dynamics of the match. Potentially. Although, I, I say time and again, man, blitzes can be Trojan horses. They can, um, they can encourage you to do what Synonymous is doing now, which he kind of has to. You know, because this is a dire situation heading in. But, um, it encourages you to come up, mark everybody, give hits to the other side you would, you would normally never have given them. You know, and then um, and then you get creamed as a result, and the other side is running down your field, caged, caged up on your half of the field. But I think you know this is this is an open this is a, a, as good a shot as he's as he's gonna get. So I think he's rightfully in a playoff match like this, jumping all over it. That, that kick is really deep, so he can't just get to the ball right away. He has, and he can't just fully commit to going forward because, uh, in all likelihood, that ball's going to get picked up and handed off for pass to another blitzer, which happens to have catch. So it's a very, very good chance of the ball just being in the other half if he overcommits here. He's doing a good job of making his blocks absolutely terrible for the uh, for the Bretts here, though, so far.
And the Brett's make their move. Yep. There's Soup Bone Sammy. Yep. I'm a little bit surprised that Soup Bone Sammy didn't actually run downfield with the wrestle skill. Because he does have movement 5. And we commented on the usefulness of skeletons because of the movement over the zombies. Now he's freed we're, up that blitzer. Yeah, we're a uh, two plus two plus three plus. Oh no, he's playing it safe. Okay, so he's not going to try and get it down to the other side of the field and get behind him. Right, because as we can see, as we have seen with many other matches, all it takes is one set, one double bad dice roll, and that just changes the whole course of the game. So he's like, "Why risk it? I don't need to score." I just need to keep him from getting the ball from me. And he's going to go conservative. Of course, at this point, all he has nothing but one die or red die blocks left. That's all he's got. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. This is the part that's going to make or break him. Because, I mean, the ball carrier is safe right now. But if all of his guys get crushed after this, you can see the mints come back. Mm -hmm. stunned. That's good, but that that most likely will free up too much coffee man hmm. to go in for at least a mark, maybe a blitz. Oh, that's even worse. One of the many rerolls spent. Well, he does have three. And yeah, and three so he's sits the blitzer back to kind of screen off too much coffee man like as you were talking about and um mm -hmm. hmm. so he is going to successfully keep him away from him that's good that's smart when you can't block him run run away right another successful dodge yep Oh, it's just good. The way he's set up now, he's, he should be able to, uh, to take over the middle and set up a cage. Because uh, Sonata Mouse likely will have to commit a piece or two to winning these blocks on the line. And thus concede the middle. Yeah, if, if the so mints that he can don't start. In front. If the mints don't start getting some attrition here, I don't see them tying this up. They gotta take advantage of these blocks on the line, and you might see Synonymous do that. Just really try to maximize putting these guys out of the game. First, first block by Ben the Fairy Master knocks down Fat Albert or Grande Albert, and. 
is un he's just going to get right back up. That's what's so annoying because of that fend, man. You put a guy down, you can't even follow up on him. Um, normally, if he didn't have fend, you would have seen uh, the Fairy Master move up and be able to assist on Garand El Viejo, the old, on the old man. But because of the fend, there is no help there. And Salty Jim is just going to get pushed back. And again, the block's just not coming for the Afterlife Mints. We looked at them as a very dangerous team, but, I mean, if they if it's all big blue arrows, then, you know, they're not that scary. And the Fend and the Wrestle are really, really helping matters for the Brents. This is exactly yeah. the nightmare that, that Afterlife Mints feared. When the armor doesn't break, Brett's are really good at controlling the field. Very true. Some some people, their strategy is actually don't even target the high-level guys. Go after the, uh, the peasants. Break the armor, and once you've removed them, there's no buffer, and the rest of the team is very um, beatable. very true, especially if you're packing a lot of Mighty Blow, such as uh, this team is. Alright, so at least that one, Irma's able to knock that Brett down and still in contact with the zombie, which is still going to be dangerous and helpful to the Mints, but no big armor breaks, man. Yeah. It's, it's got to be frustrating. have two apples so even when those big armor breaks do start coming we got two apples he doesn't even use any of them mm -hmm. I think it's likely to uh, those are there to keep his his blitzers healthy because that that's his ticket at this point I mean if, if he could afford to lose one having four for sure but uh, the, the AV7 one would just be backbreaking to lose because that's that's his agility piece. Very true. You want you don't want to be burning rerolls on the pickups. Julia Childs looks like uh, looks like he's in trouble or she or or it whatever whatever that goal is. Oh. Dodges away. <laughs> I'm very disappointed that we haven't seen a single foul, and both teams are sporting dirty player. Yeah, some big surprises in the cup, right? Strategies are different than what people expected. The uh, the high elf uh, wood elf um, matchup was not a high scoring affair. The the undead and Brett match is very non-violent. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> um, with Supo and Sammy knocked to the ground, and it looks like the Brits are trying to clear up a little. Little spot in like that left, the left middle. But again, they're, they're just, they just are under no pressure to do anything drastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know I'd rather be on the end of the field with uh, the mummy that is lacking both tackle and block. Uh, True. <laughs> I mean, he's got block and tackle. Jesus. Yeah, it might it's be two, time to two reverse doubles. field. Yeah.
Yeah, because prawn, he, he, the the white and the skeleton most likely are going to get tied up over there. So he's going to have to fall over to this side with what he can. Yeah, like he he should be able to break up this side presumably if things go well. That's always the ticket. So it's it's like he's creating kind of like a double cage. <laughs> double screen. Yeah, this is That's wow, this is deep. You'd have to get through many levels before you could get at his ball carrier. That that's a very very good plan right now being close to a mummy with stand firm because if if you only had uh one guy standing in the way. Although it's still possible to get that mummy into the cage. Does he have uh, a? Is he the break tackle guy? Yeah, he is. He is break. He is break yeah. tackle, and uh, the way those pieces are set up, if he if that's a successful block by the skeleton, successful block by the ghoul, the mummy's free, and he could just blitz his way in there. See how the mints respond. This could be a crucial moment. <laughs> Tripper says this Brett team is doing great. It's winning against the second best undead team <laughs> in the playoffs. A little trash talking from the other undead team. Uh, there is kind of a, a a grudge match waiting in the wings between these two with the mints. I mean, we work long and hard to get to where we are. Whereas, you know, the, uh, the upstart uh, Expendables just kind of jumped into the tournament, went up quickly, and then um, started doing a bunch of celebrity appearances and, um, you know, appearing on TMZ and doing movie appearances and not playing a lot of Blood Bowl. So, I think that kind of rubbed the, rubbed the other undead team the wrong way. And if you want to find out more about the background of these teams, um, go to our official forums and check out forums.bloodbowl-game.com and then go into the little section about the PS4 competition or the competitions and you'll find... Anyway, I'll, I'll post a link in the chat and make it even easier for you guys. But generally, your your answer to all of your questions about, the, about Cyanide's iteration of Blood Bowl can be found on the forums. So if you've got suggestions, they, got a, um, they have a, uh, a thread for that. General comments on the game. If something went wrong, um, that's the place to report it. Basically, and they're they're pretty responsive. And here I'm posting the link to that. So the mummy finally gets to feed. No, he doesn't at first. And no, it's just big blue arrows. And this has just been the story of the night, right? For for the undead. Unable to capitalize on the blocks. And the armor breaks just... And the armor breaks are not coming for them. Certainly not. This is, uh... Gotta be frustrating. There's a pow, but... There we go. Wow, actually a KO. And it happens to be the dirty player, who we haven't seen play dirty at all. He's such a... So he's cleaned up his act. He's too nice a guy. He ought to be off the field. <laughs> So apparently, I think there should be another round two game going on. Started a half hour after this one. And that one's uh, here for another beer, the Orc team, coached by Dino321. 
and uh, the Yokido, the the coach who is rumored to be a resurrected Shogun warrior, um, or the ghost of a of a Shogun warrior, coaching his lizard team, the Geckos. So once this game is over, uh, I don't know if you're still available. Uh, you want to help me go back on that one, um, and, and actually we could do kind of a replay, catch up to the end type of deal on that play. Uh, we can twitch that after this. Uh, yeah, I could probably do that. I, awesome. I would just need a, a quick break in between because, you know, I, I have a nicotine addiction. That's <laughs> cool. a thing. Cool. And, ooh, you there can see we the go. And break up the side, and yeah, there goes the deep cage. And this is especially dangerous because if they're able to set up this screen and or cage, uh, you may never I... see the mints touch the ball again. I think this might be a sideline cage. Yeah, oh. yeah, it's a sideline cage. This this might be a little more manageable for the undead. With well, with, with what the Bretts have available, that's uh, that's what they got to do. They got to take their their opening. There's only so many guys that can catch up. Right, and and worst comes to worst, again, you you know you've um. You've put the ball away from your own end zone. So, have you forced the uh, the mints to you know, uh, scramble blindly to stop you from scoring over there and split their forces up? Even if they manage to free the ball, you might be able to get it right back. And you know, caging up is it's not going to be a, an opportunity for them. Yeah, and everybody there has uh, <coughs> sorry, everybody there has sidestep. <laughs> So. Yeah, that makes it even more difficult. Yeah, so I, I think it's a, a high chance that we're going to see some guys move around. Oh, injury! There goes Ben the Fairy Master. He's going to be badly hurt. No, he's not. Uh, he's just, he just checks it off. He's, he's good. He's good. <laughs> um, dead teams are resilient, if nothing else. I think we might see that break tackle come to effect next turn, though. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yep. He's definitely the best man for the job. Yep. Ooh. So that changes the situation. That that really does. Unless the one die unless he wants to go garlic busey one die on Louis El Rudo. And then send the mummy with the break tackle over there. Uh, which is also a recipe for disaster because all three of those brats sitting over there have dauntless. They're all blitzers. So they're all they're all dauntless players. They they don't mind picking on a big man. So you yep. mark up their ball carrier and it can, it can be to your own demise. Look at these dodges yeah. just working. Are those elves oh. or brats? Well, I guess we got the answer to the question there. It's definitely Brett's. Yep. And El Viejo is stunned. How do the mints respond to this? This is just not looking good for them. This is going to be tough to overcome. I think Absolutely. you got to... I think you got to make that ghoul block, a two die block somehow, so you can clear the path for the mummy to get just just get in there and go for it and try and mark guys up. I mean, if they do take a crack back at the mummy, the Dauntless would be a three plus in that scenario, which isn't nearly as reliable as a as a two plus when it's strength three versus four. Yeah. So there's a chance of failure. And he has stand firm, which would be very, very annoying. Yeah, absolutely. One, two. So if he manages to knock him out of the way, you get the break tackle. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, even then, man, it becomes. Yeah, you need that knockdown. So then it becomes one. Well, he doesn't even need the knockdown though, right? Because the ghoul right there, he could, at the minimum, he can move the skeleton there. 
mm -hmm. you know, I, obviously it'd be better to move the skeleton into uh, marking the cage. If, but if that ghoul pushes a guy, just just pushes him up one square, then that mummy can make it. To just to mark up the outside blockers, right? Yeah, like it's a shame there's nobody else. Oh, no, this frees up the white. That's right. Yeah, so so that can that white make it? Yeah, so now the white can come over, mark up that blocker. He gets a two-die block with the ghoul. Even if it's a push, he just pushes him straight up. That's all he needs. And then that skeleton can come in as backup, mark somebody, send in the mummy. Nope. Oh, he decides not to. Ah. So I guess he's... See, I, 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 get, I get the... The thing is, if you mark him from behind... If you mark the bow carrier from behind, he's an agility four guy with dodge, and your and your mummy doesn't have tackle. So it's true, but unless like with, you can get with him the resources front. available, with the resources available, like what other better line of play is there? The only thing I could, <laughs> yeah, the only thing I could think is if you could somehow. So there's a, a downed ghoul. I think you mark the other Brits. One, two, three, dodge four, out five. The, I, yeah, you dodge the ghouls. I think. I'm trying to just yeah, mark. I mean. Yeah, maybe dodge the ghoul and hit the blitzer in the front, or just exactly. go YOLO and and try and uh, just dodge Ooh. in there. But I don't think that's right. Okay, looking out. So okay, so there there you go. So the white came all the way over. Wow, that was a hell of a. He covered a lot of ground. And is he gonna come with the money? Is that what's it, or is it gonna be the uh, the is Julia Child's gonna dodge out? One, two, three, four. Skeleton might might do the duty himself as well. Oh, I, yeah, I hope they don't take the hit with Julia Childs. Like, I hope... Yeah, sorry. So they're coming with the skeleton. I'm going to put some extra... Okay. And is the is the dodge out going to be with Julia? I think so, because Garlic Busey knocks back that blocker. See, the Bretts can score on the next play. So it's coming with Julia. Here comes the Blitz. Oh, they're gonna do that! Oh, that oh, does this. And it's a push. A side stepper. That was. Oh, I agreed with everything up until that. No, I think you had to dodge out and hit the lead blocker. I think that's what you kind of had to do. Yeah, just to try and get out in front. Yeah, but this puts them in. A, this guarantee. This all but guarantees a Brett touchdown. I mean, right now. The, the Bretts have two re-rolls, and, and they're within an unobstructed path to the end zone, requiring only two go-for-its. That's the last re-roll right there. There you go. Oh, and look Ooh. at that. Wow. And that's a sidestepper, too. So that's, that's a potential game-changer. And that's when, uh, I mean, this is a coach who knows what's at stake and says, you know what, I could play it safe and just sit back here or I can, you know, go YOLO and make this make this thing happen. You miss, a, you know, you miss 100% of the uh, balls that you never take a swing at, so. Mm -hmm. So here's the problem. is like they just... want to clear out this ghoul, but if they... If they fail to knock him down, that puts him right on the ball carrier. Yeah, we, and with all that guard in there, it looks like the ball carrier is the guy who has to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Take the blitz. Yeah. Which is so dangerous. This is great, man. This whole game has been, I mean, it's not a high-scoring affair, but it has just been counter, like punch, counterpunch. Like, every time you think somebody's screwed, they do something to get back in it. Yep, so this guy's probably going to mark the white. Oh, no, he's no. not. He's going to mark the ground with his ass. Oh, dear. That's big, especially because now you're going to try to hit a sidestepper. You're only going to get one shot to get him down. And it's a going for it to score for this guy, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the oh, extra man. training helps. Again, this guy did extra wind sprints this week, ran some stairs. Lothair d'Artois otherwise would not have made it there. And there comes the blitz. Will it be successful? That's it. 
He gets it. He does. Ex yeah, he does get it. And there's nothing really that, since you've been felled, there's nothing that your sidestep will do. It's smart to get him away from the other, you know, from the other mark at least. But, you know, you're still that one go for it away. He's got, is he, I mean, is he going to run right up to the line? Or yeah, is he just going to say, let's go for it? It's risky either way. He could, because that goal's not marked. Right. And, yeah, uh, there's no safe play. And the ghoul is a tackler, so it's not one in six chance of freeing up that ball. Yeah. It's a uh, one third. Oh, the oh. go for it fails! And guess who skipped his wind sprints this week? That's right, it was Gauthier! Who was talking about when they told him, come do your wind sprints, Gauthier? Gauthier said, practice? Man, we're talking about practice. And this is why practice is important. The lack of extra training came up big. Now, here's the problem is there are still uh, – now, how do you pick up that ball and get it downfield in a way that the Bretts don't just take it right back? Hmm. So, Julia Childs is going to safety, like, sit over that ball like a safety. Yeah, they you have know. no rerolls. <laughs> yeah. Skeleton frees up a ghoul. You're going to see Garlic Busey come in and um, either mark or try to screen. I think you're going to have to mark the Brett. I think that's what has to kind of happen unless you, yeah, unless you hit him. No, you're not going to hit him. You're going to mark him, if anything. Hmm. This is, oof. I mean, out of the frying pan into the fire, though, right? Like, they, all right, avoided the touchdown, so the game is not over yet because I think we both agree a touchdown here is a death knell. In the, in the next uh, time. Yeah, time, time is clearly running out. Uh, the Mints have five turns counting this one. That's yeah, that's rough. So um, stopping the score is big. It keeps you in the game, but you know for how long? <laughs> is it just buying you time to delay to the inevitable? And um, the Mints just trying desperately to take the pieces off the board. Finally, some of them starting to come off, but will it be too little too late? The thing is, if if the Mints can manage to center this ball, uh, get it back down to midfield, they've got a fighting chance. That's a mighty blow on AV7. Will Fat Albert hold up? No! Fat Albert dead. is dead! Diabetes kills Fat Albert, and so do uppercuts. If they're going forward, they're going forward without a kicker. Oh, apothecary. Wow, was Fat Albert that important? The peasant sucking up the uh, the apo and uh, ends up being armor six. So I, I, I don't know how long he'll stay on the team anyway. But I guess he, you know, is in 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 service of his uh, or in honor of his dedication to the team and his prior service and, and the heart and soul he's played. Um, Sonata Mouse just doesn't feel right not saving his life. Now we really do have a situation though. Where if that ball can somehow get back to midfield, you we might be seeing overtime. And yep, he's okay. gonna mark him with garlic Busey. Um, again, this is not completely safe because there is a uh, well, there's two guard. Yeah, so ah, uh, this is actually it's... with the break tackle mummy. If the break tackle mummy gets involved, this gets even tougher. Yeah, this or are you is, dodging uh, out the ghoul? Look, oh, let's see. Now that'll free up the ghoul reliably. Or yeah, if you yeah, can yeah, get blocked yeah. with the ghoul, then there was no guarantee of a free piece. Absolutely. So that's, yeah, I think that's better. And now are we, what are we doing with Irma? Somehow, you know, providing an extra mark on these blitzers? I think you have to, yeah. Yeah. Wait, uh, would you have sat him? I might have touched both, just because of the guard available. Yeah. What do you think? Mark, mark both, because the problem is if this guy can, if this guy, uh, Chath Chalons or whatever can, Lethe Lethafre, whatever the hell his name is, Chalon. Well, they don't. Oh. oh, that's not good. That hurts. That really hurts. He should not. He probably should not have done that. That might have been the block too too many. Yeah, like, 
it might have been better just to leave all those guys where they were. Not a single Brett had a uh, two die block there along Correct. the whole line. Now they do. Correct. And it's and he's closer to the ball. Yeah, that just that's really good for the Bretts. Mm -hmm. uh, the only the, the the lone guy standing between the end of this game as we know it um, on any realistic level right now, or lone guy, lone player is Julia Childs. She's just sitting over there, baking her cookies by the ball, <laughs> stealing her chin, ready for the onslaught that's probably coming her way. But I'm sure the Bretts appreciate how dire the situation is. It's, it's touchdown or bust. Because if those ghouls get a hold of that ball, this is, this is going overtime, most likely. Not necessarily. They, they still would have to get it all the way down the field. Which I mean, the ghouls can pass. That's just, they can move seven and pass, and you know. And, yeah. No, you're right. It's not but a necessarily. There's a white free. But but it, there is a white free down there, better. and only there's only one Brett in the bottom half of the field. So exactly. It, yeah, it's, it's tough. He's yeah, got an kind escort. Of going all in here. If they can get it to the white, he's got a he's got an escort, a three-player escort to to take him right downfield and go for overtime. Two, three, four. Five, I'm six. torn, yeah, man. Free up a guy. As a oh, Blood yeah. Bowl he's, fan, he's... I want to see the the, the bits ba bounce back. But as a, a coach who's still in the in, in the cup, I uh I, I really don't want to see the mints. <laughs> and then again, and as I'm watching the Brits, I kind of don't want to see the Brits. We're about to see a two die block on that ghoul up there. Yeah, we are. Ouch. So that one block to it. We talked about that before two prior stunned. broadcasts. Sometimes just because you can block doesn't mean you should. That's a huge armor break. That makes life miserable for the mints if they uh, if they get a shot at this next turn. Here comes the boom. El boom, or as the nobles hispanos like to call it, el blitzo. Sidestep. Oh, will matter into because he gets to knock into yep. the ball. That's smart. Very, very I mean, smart. Both those both those guys have catch, which really sucks. But if it goes off the sideline, that's your that's your best shot. Absolutely, and it does. It goes into it the does. crowd, and the crowd launches it back to the sideline, and the sideline launches it back onto the field to midfield bounce pass to a blocker, a uh, blitzer rather, and no, a blocker for the Bretts. And this is big right now. Uh, and and El Viejo was sitting there scratching his balls, thinking, you know what? I kind of done everything I needed to do. It's out of my hands. These guys got the touchdown. Next thing you know, this ball bounces into his hands. He's like, oh, what the hell? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is a special situation. The mitts, they've got a break tackle zombie who can get there to, uh, to knock El Viejo away from that ball. If Irma Bombeck can dodge away successfully, pick up the ball, throw it to the white, Whoa, this is, talk about a last-ditch effort there by Julia Childs is literally laying it all on the line to keep her team alive. What do you think, break tackle zombie? No re-rolls, I know, but I think, uh, or are you running back I, thrills? No, you can't run back thrills. I think you got to position best you can and just go for it with the white. He's, he's... You, there's no rerolls. There's, there's, there's nobody else. So the the uh, break oh. tackle on the zombie actually is is the better move, right? On the on the on the mummy, you mean? On I mean, the mummy, mummy. Sorry, right? Yeah, but he has to roll uh, a two plus to dodge away, and this white here, he, uh, he does, all he needs to roll is to block on the guy. That's it. Yeah. That's all he I, needs to do is it, like getting that right. guy off of the ball would be is it's got to be priority number one. Because that's the least amount of dice possible to to get somebody up there, and then yeah. worry about dodging that mummy over there in case and he fails. And that's what he does. He plays it more conservatively. Um, just all right. So he he manages to, to you know to get that. And now is he gonna mark up the ball and then try to dodge away with the ghoul, or is he just gonna try to pick it up right there with the white? Oh, he's gonna say, "Screw it! I'm going for the oh, ball." No. He goes YOLO, but he slips, and that ball falls right back by El Viejo, who looks down and says, "What is this? Another ball?" 
So he, st he interrupts the scratching of his of his uh, older uh, balls and decides to look at this new ball that's laying on the ground in front of him. But can he get to it? Uh, he doesn't even have to because uh, all he's got to do is knock away Suit Bone Sammy, and that ball is in range for Gautier de Clocolon to run over and pick up. Ah, it's such a, it's a, like this is such an emotional swing. This one minute you, you think something's gonna happen, it just goes completely the other way. What a match! This has got to be nerve-wracking and horrible for the coaches actually involved. But for us, it's great. Oof. The Brett's have been getting far more of the pows. Yeah. Absolutely. Here, by the look of it. Oh, man. Absolutely. Yep, they got two guys on that ball now. Yeah, and you're definitely seeing Gautier come up and pick it up. Is he a sure-handed guy? No, he's not. He's a catcher. But he does have agility four, so... Oh, yeah, but fails. Nuffle says no at first! And That's he did some ball handling drills this week, apparently. And they really help him out. Kind of no spend all of the karma. Anybody now. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all. This is it. You take what Nuffle gives you. The dodge comes in very handy right there for Tristan El Bendito. Good dodge. I think I would just stay. I wouldn't do a damn thing more. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. I, let's see if Sergio's a little more uh, judicious with his use of the blocking than, than his opponent was. Right, so this this could be a different story as well if if he had just not blocked. Yeah, that 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 was huge. That made it much much easier to uh, to get that block on the ghoul. But I mean, yeah, it's it would have been a different game. It would have been. Yeah, I mean, he was helped out by the favorable bounce to midfield. But again, you know, it's. Ugh. Now you're in a position where it's turn 14. You've only got one person, one player that's not even in scoring range, but it's even somewhat close to it, and it's a skeleton. Um, is that the break tackle zombie? Yeah. So he's going YOLO. I think you might see – are you going to see a block from Thrills? One. Yeah, we're going to see a block from Thrills. One, two. He's going to use the, Agi, the basically Agi 5 equivalent of break tackle 5. And take the hit on Gauthier, I think I think you have to, right? Yeah, I mean the Or blitz out with the It's a dodge it's a three point. plus. That's what he's doing. Oh. Oh, he made it naturally. Look at Get that! It. That's huge. Big hit! He still has break tackle available as an option now too, because he made it with a he six. He does! Great pointing out! Not only that, he stuns him! Is he going to follow up with a catch? No. He doesn't even need the break tackle, though. Honestly, that's exactly where you want him. That's a good scatter. But now they need to start thinking about who they're going to get downfield. Oh, Nuffle. Uh, Not being kind to the mints. Garlic Busey gets stunned. Yikes. Oh. So this is this is tough because you re you really really the first thing they need to do in turn 15 before they do anything else is get somebody downfield that's in scoring range. I mean because you could always try to pick up the ball and do a last minute heave in turn 16, but if nobody is downfield within scoring then range, you just it's can't over. do it. Yeah. Whew. This is wow. This is crazy. It can even get anybody down. Like, is there anybody he could even... One, two, three... Four, no, that's not going to work. Wait, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If he if he goes all out with two GFIs, that white can get to, to the, to the eight-meter mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, even that. That white is out of range. The deeper white. The crabby yeah. would need to have... Two turns of two GFIs to get to the touchdown. So he can't even stop to pick up the ball. 
you'd have to have a, a ghoul hand it to him. If you ran Irma Bomb back downfield, you could get to the four, and that actually, that could get you where you need to go with two GFIs. So Irma Bombek, the one that's, uh, I don't know if you see over, but you see the stunned, um, the stunned Garlic Busey? So mm -hmm. Lambert d'Artois is, uh, is marking Irma up. He's got tackle, too. That doesn't help. Irma has to dodge out and go two GFIs to then be in the position to GFI twice into the end zone. And you could have Krabby <laughs> pick it up and get it to him. This is, it's not looking good for the Brents. Or... You could really pull the, uh, you know, you could make an MVP out of an unlikely star by somehow blitzing free too much coffee, man. And if you can get him to one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. All you got to do is move too, too much coffee, Here man, comes a mummy blitz. up two spaces, and he's a potential recipient. Will Dauntless kick in? That, that wasn't the blitz? What? I thought for sure that's what would have happened there. Oh. No, I think they're just trying to make sure that they have enough people on the ball. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I think I, that the first thing you do is you take Irma, right? You take Irma Bombeck and put Irma, put Irma in scoring range. That's what I'm thinking. Three, four, five, six, seven. Six, seven. Oh, that is not what they wanted. Wow. That is not nope. what they wanted. Oh, just not. Nuffle has not been going. Why would you do that? Oh, oh no. No, oh, that's your score. That's your potential score. It's it's awkward though because you got to take both GFIs with Irma. Oh Man, no! That's it. Game that's over. It. Game over. Now you have no shot. Score. That would have been okay, not really okay, but it would have been still not the end of the game if Irma had been in scoring range. But now it's over. Done deal. Yep. The Brats are taking it home. The lesson to be learned, kids: get your scorer in place in turn 15 or turn 16 is for naught. And now the only thing that Sonata Mouse can hope for is a moral victory in keeping the Bretts from scoring a second touchdown and making the scoreboard look two to nothing. But Nuffle likes to uh, make it pour when it rains, and Nuffle definitely makes it rain like a VIP champagne room up in the strip club here. He's not bringing good luck as the mummy goes out with a knockout against him. And here comes El Bendito knocking down Krabby, or knocking, yeah, knocking down Krabby. I think we may see the, uh, yeah, see a, I think we're seeing uh, El Viejo pick up that ball. He's been ogling. Hand it off. There yep. you go. GFI for the touchdown. It'll probably cut off because it's coming. Oh, no, he won't because we still have a second, second bottom of this turn 16 to go. See and now Makes this time. <laughs> yeah, Sergio, Sergio, Sergio could do that anyway because if worse comes to worse and, and he didn't make the GFI, there's nobody in scoring range to stop it. So. Otherwise, it may have ended one nothing. Wow. Um, I. <laughs> Did you did you predict a two to zero score? Did you foresee a two to zero score here? Um, these two teams? it's. I th I thought it would be a little closer than that, but it I I I believe I did pick the Brents to win this one. Somebody like, said. Yeah. Yeah, I think you did as well. Somebody, one of our, our announcers, it may have been about this match, said that whatever happened, it may have been Tripperous, whatever happened. Um, it was going to be heavily in favor of the winning team. He said he could see either one winning, but it wasn't going to be close. It was going to be a drumming either way. Either the Bretts were going to get pummeled really early, attrition-wise, and be helpless, or these skills were going to neutralize the undead. Yeah, Trippers. So Trippers is saying in the chat, he predicted it's a, it, it would not be close. 
And, um, you know, you're, yes, you're right. In score, the score was not close. But let's be honest. This game was down to the wire up until turn 15. And had Sinana Mouse used his ghoul and, and made those two GFIs, you know, uh, to start turn 15, it would have came down to turn 16. Potentially, yeah. It, it would have given him... It would have given him the chance. Of course, we know now it's it's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the blocking dice weren't there. Was, that mummy failed, and just that yeah. uh, that was a brutal failure. And I could see, like percentage-wise, you have a much better chance of surviving a two-die block than. Um, not without block, though. I'm not sure that that... I, I forget what the exact percentages are. But, not, yeah, surviving a two-die block without block versus two GFIs without a reroll, I think it's still in favor of the... Yeah, two-die block, right? Yeah, uh, two GFIs without reroll is the same as uh, a three-plus, basically. Because you have two chances in six, which is one in three of failure. If you right, want to think about then, it even uh, worse, um, think about uh, surviving two GFIs is the equivalent of throwing red dice when you have block. As far as not getting knocked down. Yeah. You have two chances where you don't get, you know, it's, if you don't have a reroll. It's the same. And two... Uh, a, a two die block with no block skill. That's uh, three and thirty-six, so one and thirteen chance of failure, right? Two die block with so. no block skill. Yeah, you yeah. um, you on each one. How many chances? Let's see how many combos. There's three dice combinations where you fail on a two die block with no two block. Two skulls, two right? both sure. downs. Under, wait, one, two, three. Oh, sorry, four. 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 It's four, right? Yeah. yeah. Four. There's an easy chart already made up somewhere on like the uh, oh you know where it is on 1,000 losses. Have you ever read that book? Yeah, I've a, seen yeah. that one. Yeah, so that yep. one they has a, a really while. good chart break, breakdown of it. That's probably the best place for uh, Blood Bowl math. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. It's a very very good read. I highly recommend it if you're looking to get good at Blood Bowl, and you've never seen that. Check it out. It's called 1,000 Losses. Uh, let me see if I can pull up. I have it on my computer. Um, see if I can pull up that chart where they give the statistics. Because when you look at some of these, you're like, oh, snap, red die blocks in some cases aren't as bad as I thought they were. So, yeah, so uh, two GFIs, or rather, okay, so what's a good way? It says a, a two die block or a red die block with no reroll. Let's see. Minus two dice block with block. All right, no block. Right. Of course, that's assuming. Uh, <clears throat> well, actually, yeah. No, that's just accounting for a chance of failure. Sorry. So yeah. Yeah. So if you have a a, a red die block with block but no reroll, that's 11 out of 36 chance of failing. And if you're trying to make two GFIs, so two plus. Without a reroll, you're looking at just a little better. Six out of thirty-six. Uh, not significantly better. Six out of thirty-six. The reroll. I don't know why it works out that way, but. But well, in any case, yeah. <laughs> it looks like uh, Sinana Mouse will have to try and make it back to the playoffs for a third consecutive time if he uh, if he wants to go deep. And until then, we have Sergal to welcome to the second round. Yeah. So, and I'm sure we'll see Sinana Mouse back in the playoffs. I would not be surprised. No. He, had to, he did have to grind it out pretty hard with this team, though. <laughs> yeah, he took some early losses and he stuck with it. Um, you know, to, to combat the the 
possibility of the you know the people that were coming in and getting the managing to pull off like the 12 and 0 runs or 11 and 0 runs and making the playoffs that way. But with season three, like we said, you know it's going to be a little more more emphasis on making you play some more games. So um, those teams that you know you come in and you, you jump off to a great start, um, you're going to have to prove over the long run that you can hold it. So yeah, I, I bet that's more about win percentage. Back. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is good. I think that's better. No, yeah. Well, season two was was a lot more about win percentage, and now season. And remember, season one was all about grind. Not all about grind, but season one was more grind. Season two was more win percentage. So you come in eleven and zero. You're like hundred percent win percentage. I'm good. You know, but uh, season three is going to be kind of reeling it back and saying, yeah, win percentage. Oh, no. that's a goodbye present. <laughs> Take uh. Grande Rascador, which is the big scratcher, and take him off the table, and um, it, the Bretts are going to leave the zombies something to remember, uh, leave the undead something to remember them by in a zombie piece. They still have that second apothecary, too. I think they're just, uh, <laughs> like, ah, he's, no. he's, he's, a, he's not <laughs> worth it anyway. Yeah, well, you know, they do have the second apothecary, but there are more hits to give at this point, so... Yeah, I mean this this guy getting hit actually has a skill, so. <laughs> yeah. Nah, and, but he's fine. And, and they've, uh, I mean, this has been a lesson quietly. If you're still watching, um, this is still entertaining because even though the game's over, you might see a uh, no, probably not. So I, there was a one nope. t one turn touchdown attempt, but uh, Cabal Vision cut us off, and we are now looking. He was at one the square short. Uh, was he? You were able to see it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, he. It cut out too, but I was I was checking his movement range, and he was one square short of making the end zone. He needed to move, be pushed one more space. Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, so the armor breaks pretty much the same. Um, a little more for the afterlife mints, but by the time they came around for the afterlife mints, it was too little, too late. Um, Julia Child's getting MVP, and she did her best. She really does deserve it. She laid it all out on the line from there. The mummies just didn't do the big damage that they wanted them to do. The the blitzers were instrumental as always for the Bretts. Um, stats wise, anything else that jumps out? We got an interception. That might be the first one of the uh, first interception of, of the, the playoffs. Up. Yeah, of the, of the yeah, yeah, that is. Two. Uh, Look at the difference in no. blocks, dude. Sixty-six blocks to twenty-three, and yet the armor breaks were almost the same. That's the story of the yeah, match. Yeah, that's that is pretty crazy with so much ABE. Seven floating around on both sides, really skeletons and peasants. But uh, wow, yeah, the the damage didn't come early enough for the mint. They just did not get the attrition. Yikes! All right, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut uh, from this match. I'm going to go uh, dead air for like you know two or not dead air. I'm just gonna uh, cut the feed for about maybe two to five minutes, and then we'll get started sure. on the ongoing match. Now the only thing is. Uh, just just in case I get notification that this other game is still going on, um, you know, and I can and if I can jump in there while it's still live somehow before you're back on, I'll just start it and then you join me. But I'll send you a party invite. Oh, actually, stay in the party, yeah, and then just jump back on the party when you're ready. Sounds good. But otherwise, if you're if you're watching, I'm looking to get this feed back on within five minutes, and we'll bring you here for another beer versus uh, the geckos. geckos. Yeah, Oryx versus geckos, and this is the. This was the other. Uh, this was the other team that. Uh, this is basically. I'm gonna play the winner of this team. Uh, so definitely something I'll be watching with uh, some kind of uh, yeah, interest on my own. Both of them look scary. So all right, thanks guys. Thanks for joining us, and thank you to my co-hosts, uh, uh, Demented. Thank you very much for joining me, and um, as always, it's been a pleasure, guys. We'll catch you soon.